Hello, fourth grade. This is Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, chapter 20. Only Charlie left. I'm reading from the Puffin Books edition, copyright 1964, and the illustration copyright is 1973. Which room shall it be next? said Mr. Wonka as he turned away and darted into the elevator. Come on, hurry up. We must get going. And how many children are there left now? Little Charlie looked at Grandpa Joe, and Grandpa Joe looked back at Little Charlie. But Mr. Wonka, Grandpa Joe called after him, there's, there's only Charlie left now. Mr. Wonka swung round and stared at Charlie. There was a silence. Charlie stood there, holding tightly onto Grandpa Joe's hand. You mean, you're the only one left? Mr. Wonka said, pretending to be surprised. Why, yes, whispered Charlie. Yes. Mr. Wonka suddenly exploded with excitement. But my dear boy, he cried out, that means you've won. He rushed out of the elevator and started shaking Charlie's hand so furiously that it nearly came off. Oh, I do congratulate you, he cried. I really do. I'm absolutely delighted. It couldn't be better. How wonderful this is. I had a hunch, you know, right from the beginning, that it was going to be you. Well done, Charlie, well done. This is terrific. Now the fun is really going to start. But we mustn't dilly. We mustn't dally. There's even less time to lose now than there was before. We have an enormous number of things to do before the day is out. Just think of the arrangements that have to be made and the people we have to fetch. Luckily for us, we have the great glass elevator to speed things up. Jump in, my dear Charlie, jump in. You too, Grandpa Joe, sir. No, no, after you. That's the way. Now then, this time I shall choose the button that we are going to press. Mr. Wonka's bright, twinkling blue eyes rested for a moment on Charlie's face. Something crazy is going to happen now, Charlie thought. But he wasn't frightened. He wasn't even nervous. He was just terrifically excited. And so was Grandpa Joe. The old man's face was shining with excitement as he watched every move that Mr. Wonka made. Mr. Wonka was reaching out for a button high up on the glass ceiling of the elevator. Charlie and Grandpa both craned their necks to read what it said on the little label beside the button. It said, up and out. Up and out, thought Charlie. What sort of a room is that? Mr. Wonka pressed the button and the glass doors closed. Hold on, cried Mr. Wonka. Then, wham, the elevator shot straight up like a rocket. Yippee, said Grandpa Joe. Charlie was clinging to Grandpa Joe's legs and Mr. Wonka was holding onto a strap from the ceiling. And up they went. Up, 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 straight up this time, with no twistings or turnings, and Charlie could hear the whistling of the air outside as the elevator went faster and faster. Yippee! shouted Grandpa Joe again. Yippee! Here we go! Faster! cried Mr. Wonka, banging the wall of the elevator with his hand. Faster! Faster! If we don't go any faster than this, we shall never get through. Through what? shouted Grandpa Joe. What have we got to get through? Aha, uh -huh, cried Mr. Wonka. You wait and see. I've been longing to press this button for years, but I've never done it until now. I was tempted many times. Oh, yes, I was tempted but I couldn't bear the thought of making a great big hole in the roof of the factory. Here we go, boys, up and out. 
But you don't mean, shouted Grandpa Joe, you don't really mean that this elevator. Oh, yes, I do, answered Mr. Wonka. You wait and see. Up and out. But, but, but it's made of glass, shouted Grandpa Joe. It'll break into a million pieces. Well, I suppose it might, said Mr. Wonka, cheerful as ever. But it's pretty thick glass, all the same. The elevator rushed on, going up and up and up, faster and faster and faster. And then suddenly, crash! The most tremendous noise of splintering wood and broken tiles came from directly above their heads. And Grandpa Joe shouted, Help! It's the end! We're done for! And Mr. Wonka said, No, we're not! We're through! We're out! And sure enough, the elevator had shot right up through the roof of the factory and was now rising into the sky like a rocket. And the sunshine was pouring in through the glass roof. And in five seconds, they were a thousand feet up in the sky. The elevator's gone mad, shouted Grandpa Joe. Have no fear, my dear sir, said Mr. Wonka calmly. And he pressed another button. The elevator stopped. It stopped and hung in midair, hovering like a helicopter, hovering over the factory and over the very town itself, which lay spread out below them like a picture postcard. Looking down through the glass floor on which he was standing, Charlie could see the faraway houses and the streets and the snow that lay thickly over everything. It was eerie and frightening, this feeling to be standing on clear glass high up in the sky. It made you feel that you weren't standing on anything at all. Are we all right? cried Grandpa Joe. How does this thing stay up? Candy power, said Mr. Wonka. One million candy power. Oh, look, he cried, pointing down. There go the other children. They're returning home. And that's the end of chapter 28. Last few chapters to come. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.